let's get caught up on COVID now. Joining us now, Dr. Stephen Thomas, Director of Global Health at Upstate. Dr. Thomas, thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me back. Uh, let, let's reset on our numbers. Um, even though we, they, the CDC, state have kind of moved the goalposts in, uh, we at Central New York here, our region, highest in the state for cases per 100,000 and for percent positivity. What do you make of this? Well, I think it means that, you know, there's still plenty of SARS-CoV-2 virus circulating uh, within central New York. Um, but again, the trends are still uh, positive trends. We may have leveled off a little bit from the original uh, declines, but there's still, you know, plenty of virus out there. And so uh, people just, again, need to be very smart and think and be thoughtful about how to uh, reduce their risk, which is through getting fully vaccinated and wearing a mask uh, in places where you're going to gather with other people and it, it could be potentially unsafe. So. Let's talk about schools day four into the no mask mandate for schools. When will you know if this is the right call and safe for everyone in schools and on buses to go without masks? Yeah, so I kind of think in terms of incubation periods and, and what that means is an incubation period is the time from when you get infected to the average time that you're going to get sick if you're going to get sick. Uh, and that's anywhere from two to 14 days for COVID. Most people, though, if they get infected and they're going to get sick, it's around five days. So I'm thinking anywhere between two to four weeks, we're going to kind of understand whether demasking in schools um, had any effect at all or whether it had a, a negative effect. I think one thing that's going to be a little bit difficult to figure out, though, is, um, you know, masking prevented flu and RSV and gastrointestinal diseases as well. So we may start to see those um, uh, in addition to seeing more COVID cases, but hopefully we'll see uh, we'll see neither. So, so we still got a little time to, to, right. to go yet before we judge this thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, four seems to be our number. So let's talk about fourth shot. Um, right now we've talked about it and it seems like it's only for immunocompromised. When should the general population expect to be eligible for a next shot? It's coming at some point. Is it gonna be the fall and we do it like the flu shot annually now? Will they be combined with both? What's, what's in store for the next COVID vaccination? Right. So, you know, the regulatory agencies are not going to give the go ahead to a fourth shot until there is uh, compelling data that shows that the benefit of that shot uh, would outweigh the risks of that shot. And I, I personally have not seen any um, uh, data that's available now that is compelling saying that we're going to need a fourth shot in the fall or next year or annually or, or, or whenever. So I'm still kind of on pause in terms of making a decision of uh, you know, when I think that uh, this this may happen, if it does. Because again, the, the data that is coming out is showing that three doses of a messenger RNA vaccine uh, gives you good protection and durable protection against those severe forms of disease that we're most, uh, that we're most concerned with. All right, so we wait and see. Let's talk yeah. about Omicron. Is that still the dominant variant or has it mutated into something different? And is that good or bad? <laughs> Right. So there is this kind of second version of Omicron that is starting to pick up a little bit of speed. Uh, the CDC is reporting it at about 10 percent of the total uh, uh, variant population in the U.S. It looks like in this region, the region that New York is in, um, it's uh, less less than 10 percent. Again, these numbers are not uh, are not perfect. Uh, so the short answer is that the original uh, strain of Omicron is still by far the most dominant. And, um, you know, fortunately, in New York, we have multiple labs that are tracking this, including uh, you know, Dr. Middleton and, and uh, his lab at, at Upstate. So, uh, so we'll, be, we'll, be some of the first, uh, we'll be some of the first to know. So if Omicron is still around then, and we know it's highly transmissible, should we still be worried about it? Yes, I, I mean, I, I, again, just going back to the first question, we know that there's still plenty of virus uh, circulating. We know that Omicron is much more infectious than these other uh, variants. Uh, we don't believe that it causes any more uh, severe disease. And we know that three doses of vaccine uh, for messenger RNA vaccines uh, will do a very good job at keeping you out of the hospital and getting severe disease and, and even potentially um, dying. So the, the situation really uh, hasn't hasn't changed too much. All right, we've got about 30 seconds yeah. left. What's your message for parade goers? The big parade is this Saturday. 
Yeah, so uh, I, I would just say that people need to kind of look in the mirror and, and take an o their own personal assessment of what their risk would be of a, of a bad outcome if they got infected and then think about uh, the types of things that they've done to try to mitigate that risk, which is making sure they have all their vaccines, considering whether to wear, uh, you know, whether to wear a mask or not. Uh, I think if you've been fully vaccinated um, and you're go you're wearing a mask, that I think you should, uh, uh, you know, you're in a good you're in a good spot, and you should consider uh, going to the parade. Yeah, much right. much different than we were two yeah. years ago, right? <laughs> full full circle, full yeah, circle. Exactly, Dr. Stephen Thomas. Thanks so much for your time again. Really appreciate it. We'll see you again soon. Thanks.